In this video, we will explore seven news events from the 1960s that have faded into obscurity, each with its own unique impact and significance. Number one is the 1965 Palm Sunday tornado outbreak. In April 1965, a powerful tornado outbreak struck the Midwest and southeastern United States. During this terrible event, 55 tornadoes were confirmed in just 16 hours, with at least three likely reaching the most extreme F5 intensity level. The worst part of the outbreak occurred on the afternoon of April 11th and continued into the overnight hours of April 12th. This was the second largest tornado outbreak on record at the time. It left a path of destruction stretching from Iowa to Ohio and a path covering 450 miles from Michigan to Indiana. The outbreak lasted for 16 hours and 35 minutes and featured some of the most intense tornadoes ever recorded, including at least four twin funnel tornadoes. Sadly, 266 lives were lost, more than 3,000 people were injured, and the damage totaled about 1.2 billion, equivalent to over 11 billion today. Number two, an Air Force pilot saves a U.S. Special Forces team. In 1968, Lieutenant James P. Fleming and his fellow helicopter pilots received an urgent call as they were flying back to their base in South Vietnam. A Special Forces team got stuck under enemy fire by a river. The helicopters hurried to help without stopping for fuel. Even though one of the helicopters was shot down, the rest stayed in the fight until they had to retreat because of low fuel. According to the Air Force Historical Support Division, Lieutenant Fleming hovered over the riverbank in the only transport helicopter left for evacuation. He couldn't land because the enemy fire was too intense. Despite the danger and being very low on fuel, he tried to rescue the team, but he had to pull back for a moment when they couldn't reach him. Deciding to give it another shot, Fleming came back. This time, the team was closer to the river. Under heavy fire, they managed to get to the helicopter. Fleming and the gunship made it back safely, but they were almost out of fuel. Fleming was awarded the Medal of Honor for his courageous rescue. President Nixon presented him with the medal on May 14, 1970. Number 3. The Alaska Earthquake and Tsunami in 1964, Alaska experienced a huge earthquake, measuring 9.2 on the Richter scale, one of the biggest ever recorded. The shaking lasted about five minutes. The earthquake, which was started in Prince William Sound, caused powerful tsunamis that were incredibly destructive. Some of these waves reached heights of up to 220 feet. More than 20 landslides happened on land and underwater. These landslides caused waves that hit nearby towns very quickly. There wasn't any time to warn or move people to safety. Many communities were hit by waves even before the shaking stopped. Most of the damage occurred in Anchorage, about 75 miles northwest of the earthquake's center. While Anchorage wasn't directly hit by tsunamis, its downtown area was severely damaged. Some areas of the city suffered from landslides that destroyed entire neighborhoods. Tsunamis affected people and property in British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and California. Hawaii and Japan also suffered damage. A total of 131 lives were lost in the event. Nine people lost their lives directly because of the earthquake, and another 122 lost their lives in tsunamis. Number four the USS Pueblo Incident. In early 1968, the USS Pueblo, a U.S. Navy intelligence ship, was performing surveillance near the North Korean coast. North Korean patrol boats stopped it, even though the Pueblo was in international waters. The North Koreans started shooting, and they hurt the commander and some of the crew. The Americans tried to escape, but were eventually captured. They were arrested, blindfolded, and taken to North Korea, where they were accused of spying. U.S. authorities asked for them to be let go, but didn't directly fight back. The captured crew resisted making false confessions, but faced beatings, cold, and not being allowed to sleep. Eventually, they were forced to confess. 
North Korea held a press conference where the prisoners had to lie about being treated well. But the Americans subtly made fun of their captors, which led to more beatings. In December 1968, after 11 months, a deal was made between the U.S. and North Korea. The U.S. admitted intrusion, apologized, and promised not to repeat similar actions. The 82 surviving crewmen returned to South Korea, crossing the Bridge of No Return, and were celebrated as heroes. Number 5. The 1960 New York Mid-Air Collision In December 1960, there was a crash involving two airliners over New York City. Sadly, 134 people on the planes and on the ground lost their lives. At the time, this was the only mid-air collision of airliners over a major U.S. city. The event happened on a snowy morning. A United DC-8 plane flying from Chicago was on its way to what is now JFK International Airport in New York City. At the same time, a TWA Super Constellation plane from Dayton, Ohio was heading to the nearby LaGuardia Airport. Bad weather caused the United flight to circle around instead of landing, but a mistake by one of the pilots made it cross paths with the TWA flight. The TWA plane crashed in Staten Island, while the United flight, with a missing right engine and part of a wing, crashed in Brooklyn. It narrowly avoided hitting St. Augustine's Academy, but struck an apartment building and the Pillar of Fire Church. The explosion caused fires in dozens of other buildings. Six people on the ground lost their lives in the crash, including a 90-year-old church caretaker and two Christmas tree vendors nearby. The streets were filled with Christmas presents from the plane's passengers. Firefighters fought numerous fires for almost three days straight. Number 6. The U.S. accidentally drops bombs over Spain. In 1966, a B-52 bomber crashed into a KC-135 jet tanker above Spain, dropping three hydrogen bombs on land and one in the sea. For years, U.S. bombers with nuclear weapons flew around the world to be ready to strike first, but accidents were likely because of these big operations. More than 30 times, bombers crashed or caught fire, causing nuclear contamination or losing weapons. In Spain, after a mission, the B-52 tried to refuel but crashed into the tanker, causing an explosion. All four crew members of the tanker lost their lives, but four of the seven from the B-52 parachuted to safety. Two bombs fell onto land. Their non-nuclear explosives went off, spreading plutonium all over the city of Palo Mares. But there wasn't a nuclear explosion. Cleanup was done by both the U.S. and Spanish workers, but the Spanish workers didn't know much about nuclear technology and didn't shield themselves from radiation. The missing bomb in the sea was eventually found and brought back. The U.S. paid compensation to around 500 residents affected by the accident. Even today, some nuclear weapons are still in unknown places because of accidents. Number 7. Bob Dylan's Walkout on The Ed Sullivan Show By the summer of 1963, musician Bob Dylan was gaining fame, notably after performing at the March on Washington. Yet, just months earlier, he was a relatively unknown musician with a small fan base. He had a big opportunity lined up, a performance on The Ed Sullivan Show. However, Dylan, still obscure, walked off the set when network censors rejected his song choice. The song was Talkin' John Birch Paranoid Blues, a satirical piece mocking the John Birch Society, a political lobby group. Even though Dylan had practiced the song with no problems, CBS thought it was too risky. The company was worried about getting sued by members of the John Birch Society. Instead of agreeing to CBS's rules or picking another song, Dylan left the show. Legend has it that Dylan stormed off in protest, enhancing his image as an artist of unwavering principles. However, in reality, he respectfully declined to change his song. The incident garnered significant media attention, with Ed Sullivan himself criticizing CBS's decision. In the end, the whole event helped Dylan get more attention. It might have been even better for him than being on TV. It showed how dedicated he was to his music and how he wouldn't change it for anyone. Number 8. 
U.S. armed forces land in the Dominican Republic. In April 1965, U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson sent more than 22,000 U.S. soldiers to the Dominican Republic to stop what he said could turn into a communist dictatorship there. The problems in the Dominican Republic started in 1961 when its longtime dictator, Rafael Trujillo, lost his life by the hands of conspirators. Despite his oppressive rule, Trujillo gained support from the United States during the Cold War because of his strong opposition to communism. After Trujillo passed away, Juan Bosch became the president of the Dominican Republic. He promised big changes but didn't last long because the military didn't agree with him. They kicked him out in 1963, causing chaos in the country. In 1965, fighting broke out between Bosch supporters and the Dominican military. The U.S. worried that the Dominican Republic might turn communist like Cuba, so Johnson sent troops to calm things down. He also ordered the evacuation of American nationals. Overwhelming force was used to establish control. Despite diplomatic tensions, American efforts were effective in restoring order and facilitating negotiations. American troops left in 1966 after making sure things were stable and helping ensure democratic elections. Despite facing criticism from people in both the Dominican Republic and the U.S., the intervention was considered a success by the U.S. government because it managed to protect Americans and stop a communist government from gaining power. Number 9. Neil Armstrong Barely Survived a Crash U.S. astronaut Neil Armstrong narrowly escaped a crash in May of 1968 during a lunar landing simulation. While training at Ellington Air Force Base in Houston, Neil Armstrong's aircraft, the Lunar Landing Research Vehicle, lost control due to a propellant leak. Armstrong ejected himself from the aircraft just 30 feet above the ground, right before it crashed and caught fire. If he had waited just one more second to eject, he would have lost his life. Despite the close call, Armstrong stayed calm and went back to work after the incident. This happened more than a year before he famously became the first person to walk on the moon. In summary, these overlooked news stories from the 1960s give us a peek into the different struggles, successes, and actions that define that time. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Before you go, make sure to check out these two fascinating videos. Thanks for watching the History Stop, and we'll see you next time.